that work? Okay, hello. Uh, fantastic to uh, be here. So I'm Ben Holiday. I'm going to speak about something a little bit different tonight. I think you're probably used to seeing code and examples of writing code and things you can do with code. I'm not going to show you any code, but I am going to talk about where I think design sits with front-end development. And um, I've called this tool making, and I want to talk about making. Uh, so I lead a multidisciplinary team of uh, UX designers at the Department for Work and Pensions. Uh, there was a really nice Freudian slip on the website last week which said the uh, Department for Working Pensions. Uh, which is something we are trying to do, is make, make things like pensions work better. Uh, I think we've got a couple of our team around tonight. Um, I told Colin Oakley, who uh, I think some of you know, he changed it to this, which was the uh, head of UX at the Department for Kittens and Unicorns, <laughs> which is very good of him. Uh, it was actually pretty apt because, of kittens aside, unicorns is kind of what gets said when we start talking about people that do design and front end development and they're expected to do a bit of everything. And really, what I want to talk about is actually uh, how important specialism is but also how important it is to understand and be able to work across different specialisms as well. Um, so I work on this along with my team. So there's about 25 of us working across uh, different sites in the UK now from the Department for Work and Pensions. We work with Government Digital Service, so I used to work for the Government Digital Service and I, I moved over to start a design team um, delivering services for, for DWP. So this is kind of what service design looks like for us. We spend a lot of time designing transactions and forms. Um, ben Terry at GDS always says really it's about uh, keeping our designers going because a lot of the time we're just designing black and white websites, which is true. Uh, but really important things like carers allowance. So this was our first fully live accredited service um, in last year. I'm going to plug this in actually so I can move away from the laptop. See that will work. Excellent. And really, we just believe services should be really simple to use for people. You know, government services are there to help people do things in their lives, so we're trying to develop better services that work better for people. A key part of that is here in Newcastle. Um, so I've started spending quite a lot of time here, so we've got a site up at Long Benson alongside HMRC. We've got front-end developers and designers and content designers all working together to deliver services which are more in the pension space. Um, I really like coming here, I get to go on the metro, um, if you don't know, uh, if any of you are designers you might know about uh, the Calvert font, so Margaret Calvert is a famous type designer, uh, she's famous for not only this font but more the transport font that she's used on the other side, which is actually the font that's now used on gov.uk, so there's a lot of history, she's been one of the design advisors, so it's always nice to come and see this. So this is a generic government building. So uh, this is Long Benton, but I took this photo this week mainly because there was a little bit of blue sky. I arrived and there's a bit of a running joke whenever I come here, it rains like today. Um, as soon as I went outside to take the photograph, you can see what happened. But this is kind of close to, to as blue sky as I can get. Um, it is a kind of generic government building, but inside we've got lots of agile delivery teams starting to develop these services. And we're in the same building as HMRC, which is important because we're delivering services together. Um, so let's start here. So pretty much I spend most of my time just trying to talk to people in a government department. So we're the largest government department. We've never really done design as we would talk about design in industry. Um, I spend a lot of my time explaining to people what design or UX is. And really I have to start with this. And this is, uh, this is a picture that I got my uh, daughter, who's now seven. She was six at the time to draw for me. And it was to illustrate, and I take this around with me, that design isn't just colouring in. And really, that is the perception of design in a lot of places like government, is that design is just it's the visual bit, it's the colouring in, it's the, it's the bit at the end. And really, it's to make the point that design is really, it is messy, but it is about this overlap of disciplines. But really, it's about this. So the way we describe design and how we, we do design is it's about how we solve problems and how we make things work better. So really, it's the process. Actually, I wanted to do a quick quick poll, just because I'm, I'm new here. So could you put your hand up if you're a front-end developer? That might be all of you. Could you keep your hand up if you're also a designer? So we have got some people here that, that do both, that's interesting. So just a small amount of you would say you're also a designer. So I'm going to talk about how those things overlap. But the other bit of talking about what design is is also about user experience. 
So quite famously now, uh, GDS or the Government Digital Service said user experience isn't really a thing. And they made a big, um, they made an argument really that we shouldn't have user experience designers, and it was really because of this. And I agree with this. And as a head of user experience, I can honestly say we haven't got anybody that is a user experience designer in my team. They're all doing different specialisms. So user experience really is the responsibility of everybody in your team. The thing you deliver from the quality of the code and how accessible it is through to how fast it loads, through to how well it's designed to meet those user needs, that is the user experience. It's not just one person's job. And really we've been moving in organisations, especially within places like government, to those specialisms. So this is a piece of paper that I've been carrying around for a couple of months now. So we have a, we have a head of design kind of meeting. So within each government department, we now have a head of design. So I, I head up the Department of Work and Pensions. And um, we've been trying to work out where the different design specialisms are, or where the difference is in terms of what we do. Um, this is a, so I drew this up the other day just to make it a bit clearer. But I think it really helps. So the way we look at it is it goes all the way really from uh, back-end or full-stack development through to thinking more about user journeys and user interactions. But the thing that I think is really interesting and it's why I think it's really important that in the design team we've got, we've got front-end developers working with us, is this overlap, which is this bit in the middle which is all about making. So, whereas we've got front-end developers doing production-ready HTML and CSS, and we've got designers designing user interactions, in the middle now we've got this area where we're all prototyping and working front-end code. And I'm going to talk a little bit later about designers that do that, so most of our designers do just work in code now, they all code. It might be rough and ready, but it's good enough to build something in HTML that we can go out and test with real users. The interesting thing is, even though we're moving into specialisms, I do meet people all the time. In fact, there was a couple of people tonight who are still doing all of these things because they work for a small agency or they're a freelancer. So it's interesting to think about the differences in what we do. So there's a couple of articles that help shape my thinking a little bit about this. Um, this was a really interesting one from a chap called Jason Beard, who works for Mailchimp. So. There's a school of thought that there's a job role, which is something like a UX developer. Now, I'm not sure if I agree with the job title, but I think it's interesting to see how people have got there. So, Jason wrote this post, which, and I will share the slides afterwards, I think we'll post them, so do read this. But he was in the position that, and I'll read it out, so the engineers were calling, calling him design, call them designers, the UI designers call them developers, so he's in the middle, and the research team just calls them when they need to do stuff. And that's really interesting because he talked about the fact, so going into a bit more detail, that they were working to plan UI changes and the developers, and as developers, they weren't really pushing pixels, but they were thinking about the end user and those end interactions. So they were starting to use the soft skills that the so UX designer would. And it wasn't just about the code, it was about being ahead, working out the UI, and they were starting to do a lot more than just what we might have front end development. There was another post by a friend of mine, Lisa Rijkaard, who's um, just actually leading the last day today as head of user research at the Government Digital Service. And this, this was quite controversial. This was a couple of years earlier. And this is when she was working with small teams and I think contracting or freelancing. And she, she was making the argument, she said on Twitter that UX developers were a thing. And there was a big backlash. I think Andy Budd wrote a blog post about it. And, Lots of discussion, but she just said it just makes perfect sense. The people that are involved in the interaction, <coughs> people using the thing. So, you know, front end developers are more interested in the UX than those whose work doesn't touch the user interface. And I think that makes a lot of sense. But she also said that there's a, there's a level beyond that, there's a type of person within front end development who sits in that space where they're generally more interested in the user. So they may be the people that naturally move to, towards doing their own accessibility testing or usability testing. They want to go out and work with users. They're thinking about that end experience. And I think for some of you, maybe, if you're working across all of these different things, <coughs> those things seem to be more natural. We've got people in specialisms that actually just do the one thing. They just write CSS or HTML, that's all they do all day. But what I'm interested in is actually, where's the potential for front-end developers to, to give more to teams? Because I think they can give more to teams, and we've seen that in government when we've started to embed them in design teams. So, to go back to this, you can see that really we've got code over this side, and we're moving towards UX over this side. And 
think really my advice is, or maybe the thing to think about is really which way do you lean? So if you're sat in these roles in the middle, whether you're a designer or a front-end developer, you know, do you lean more towards working on integrated code into actual systems, unit testing, deployments, you know, that side of the job? Or do you just naturally lean towards UX in terms of the soft skills of designing user action? user interactions, working out user journeys that are really going to meet user needs in terms of how things work. <coughs> what I would say is we interview a lot of people, so I've hired 16 people I think in the last 10 months, and hopefully we'll be around about 20 by the end of the year. Um, especially with front-end developers, they're not always sure either which way they're stronger on, in terms of where they really set or what they really do or probably more importantly, where they want to go. So in terms of, do they really want to develop those soft skills and move more into a team where they're working more with UX and research? Or do they want to develop more into developers who are going to be doing kind of more testing and working with systems? And I think the opportunity really is, however you think about it, is working together. So even though I mentioned that designers write code, and really we only hire designers now that can code, because I think that's really important. We don't read really wireframe. Just try and work, we sketch and we work in code. Um, really, it's quite simple how we work. We want to rapidly prototype things to test with real users. So, if we've got designers that can code and work with front end developers, that makes that whole process faster. We can get things out the door and test them faster. But if designers are going to be doing that, really, they need your help. So, I think there's some different areas where really we can talk about like, how can you collaborate. So, whether you you lean more towards UX or code, what are the areas where actually I think front end developers might start to make that difference in design teams? So the first one, which I think is really important, is just understanding the problem as a team. So I've not mentioned the word agile tonight, I probably should have done by now, but really we do agile delivery, so it's all about working as a team to solve a problem. Uh, a lot of the time we found we should run into problems it's because we haven't understood the problem. And my challenge would be that we all need to be interested in why we're doing the work or why we're delivering a product or service. And we need to be interested in actually what difference it's going to make to people. So I'm not going to have time tonight, you won't see the URL now, I'm just because it comes off, but I will share the slides. But I've written a blog post which is just called Frame a Problem. Look at that. Technology. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so frame the problem. So really, I spend a lot of my time asking five questions, which is really, why are we doing this? What's our motivation as a business? You know, what's our motivation as an organization? What problem will it actually solve for people? Have we understood the problem we're trying to solve? What's it going to do for people? Because they're, they're going to be using our product or services to do a job. You know, and then if it solves a problem for them, what does it start to return for our organization? What problem does it solve for us that they're doing it as a digital transaction rather than in another way? And also, how do we measure those outcomes? So, but I, would, I won't go into any more detail on that now, but if you're interested, do read the blog post. So I think the next thing is about interface design. So really, user interface design can be a discussion about things like feasibility and progress, progressive enhancement and responsive layout. I think that's really important. So we're really trying to get away, especially as designers, from just mocking up comps that we hand over to people to build. Really, the, the real creative process is about having these discussions where we talk about how feasible is those initial sketches, how we're imagining this could be. How would this work as a piece of responsive layout? So everything we do is mobile first. A lot of our transactions within government are 50, 60% mobile already. So we know that we need to build really, understanding things like content hierarchy and how that will work with a range of layouts. Front-end developers are the best people to get involved with those conversations. So really, you should be involved with those. Things like how do we progressively enhance stuff so it works on a range of devices, a range of capability in terms of how fast the page could load or how accessible it would be. The one thing I would say about that, really to get started again in Agile teams, it's about making sure work is just really visible. So I don't think there's any anybody that is the sketching or the ideation part of a project. I think anybody on the team can do that. Anyone can draw an idea. But I describe, the way to think about sketches is basically thinking on paper. So if you don't sketch, I'd encourage you to. But also do that in collaboration with designers and then for the rest of the team. Try and make that work as visible as possible. Just get it on a wall. So the third thing really is, once you've got something, is about testing it. 
And quite often, I don't think we think about user research as really accessibility. We think of them as two separate things. And my challenge would be that user research should and it can be the starting point for accessibility. So whatever you're doing, whether you're a designer or a front end developer, be interested in how well what you're, what you're working on is actually going to work for the people that need to use it. And the best front end developers that I've worked with really they own that process. So we all know, hopefully, that accessibility is about checklists, it's about people and how well things work. So incorporate that work in user research into your work. This is just a section actually in our Newcastle hub down the road. So uh, one of the things we'd like to say is user research is a team sport. So what I would say is get involved with user research to learn about the broad range of needs and uses of your service might have. And probably get involved much earlier than you might expect to. So not later on when we're thinking about accessibility testing. Get involved at that point when we're trying to understand the problem. So early on to even decide whether we're designing the right things. So the final thing I wanted to talk about, which I think is really important, and it's, it's one of the great opportunities of starting to bring together rapid prototyping with designers and developers, is prototyping with live data. And that really means that we can design with real data to help learn what works faster. So that's about understanding things like constraints and breaking points in our designs. So trying to bring in live data is a really good way of doing that. So again, this is the final um, post I'm going to share, which I encourage you to go read. It's Josh Puckett from Dropbox. So he um, wrote a really good post that talked about modern design tools. He was talking about how they use live data and feed that into things like their comps and also their prototype builds. And he said, when designers work with real data, they design in reality, so they allow data to inform and constrain their work. And that's really important. And just to give you a quick example, so Neil, who's here, is working on this for us at the moment. And we, so this is a service to basically trace lost pensions. So if you've ever worked and you've had a pension somewhere, so if you work at Boots when you were 20 for a year before you became a developer or a designer, and you were in the pension scheme and you've forgotten all about it, in 40 years time, you might want to find a couple of hundred pounds that they probably owe you, which is sat in a deposit box somewhere. It's really hard to do that at the moment. So we're building a service that basically lets you search to find out how to contact the right people to claim back that money. So this is an example, really, just a search engine based on data that is currently not on the internet, but is potentially going to be open data. And we found that just by testing our designs without the real data, we were really struggling to learn about what would work. We weren't really seeing if our designs would break or how much search information would come back. The way we fixed that is Neil was able to work with the developers, so front-end developer and designer working together. And we basically plugged in the live database to the prototypes, and we did it really quickly, and then we went straight out and tested that, so it was as close to the raw thing as possible. Straight away, we could start to see what worked with real users, and straight away, actually, I think as soon as we plugged it in, we could see that, you know, what was going to work in terms of the amount of information being returned, and we started to actually develop new UI patterns to deal with that. So it's a much better way of rapid prototype, and I think it's a real challenge for us that we, we've already moved away from things like, you know, Laura and Ipsum in, in kind of designs, Actually, we need to move away from just dummy data at all, even if it's kind of real words. We can move to integrate the live data, that's a real opportunity for us. So finally, this is where I, I do mention Agile. So if you are working in any sort of team that's working collaboratively, and for me, Agile just means people working collaboratively to solve a problem. Uh, Agile, delivery, Agile delivery, really, for, for me, it needs specialists who can collaborate on everything. So when we talk about having our different specialisms, I think that's really important, but we also need people that can collaborate, so front-end developers who can get involved with understanding the problem, help us sketch an idea and work out what will work, bring in live data to that process, get involved with user research to make sure our accessibility is as good as it could be. And I think that really just takes us to the point that it's about helping our teams make better decisions. So not knowing where any of you work, if you work with any kind of product manager, whether it's an agency or it's a product team, at the end of the day, your job is to help them make better decisions about what we're going to deliver to the end user. So as a front end developer, that might be more about understanding technical constraints or what's possible, but you should be talking to them and helping them in the same way that a designer should be helping them to make better design decisions. And I mean, it comes down to this really, that 
really we have to be prepared to invest ourselves in the problem. So one of the things I like to say is that you're as invested as the risk you take for your opinions. So you have to be prepared to be wrong in the team. You have to be prepared to challenge things. You have to be prepared to spend time having an opinion. It's actually something you have to choose to do. It's, it's easy just to you know take the next ticket in the sprint, deliver that piece of work. But to really challenge all this stuff, you've got to be willing to risk an opinion. And I've been very fortunate, so in, in different startups and product companies and agency work through to working in government now to work with front-end developers that do definitely care as much about that user experience as they do about writing great code, testing great code. Uh, I think really we're looking for people like that. And I would say the people like that, actually I find they get really energised by the opportunity to get involved with all these other things, to get involved with research, to really understand the problem. And I think most of all, just a chance to collaborate with others rather than just working on their own. And really, this is just my final slide. So, really, I'd say if there's one challenge and that I've sort of thought about a lot in the last few years, it is just at some point in your career, invest yourself in something. And one of the things we like to say in government is, you know, come and work on stuff that matters. There's a great hashtag at the moment of the government, lots of people posting about why they work in government. They're talking about all the problems as well, but also why the stuff we work on matters so much. I think there's a challenge there. Um, this is where the shameless plug comes in because we are all, we're all hiring the government at the moment. Ourselves at HMRC are looking for people in Newcastle all the time. I've got uh, design jobs there at the moment. We'll be hiring more from their developers at some point. So, so do get involved and we've got people that are involved with this, this meetup and other events in the city now. Um, but yeah, if, if you want to know more about that, come and talk to me. I'm happy for you to come and tell me I'm wrong about what front end developers do and what designers do. I'm always interested to discuss that, but um, I think we've got time for questions. But thank you very much for, for listening. That is just one. If there's any questions, feel free to fire away. Do you carry out much of the way like A/B testing? So we do, I mean it's different kind of types of user research. So early on in a project we do a lot of qualitative work, so we'll go out and test on designs in the lab, so or we'll do things like pop-up or gorilla testing. When we deliver a live service, so we're trying to deliver like an MVP in the beta, we'll either run it be less A-B testing, but it'd be more hypothesis driven design. So we'll run hypothesis boards and we'll do releases and measure the results and then we'll take those releases out again, so we'll test them against the last release, if that makes sense. Yeah. We're starting to do more A-B testing in live. It's just difficult because of how we've hosted and delivered services in the past. So it's definitely some government departments are starting to do it now. There's also legal things, whereas if it's a transaction, sometimes legally for policy reasons, we have to, we can't ask a question in a different way. We can change it for everybody, but just not different ways at the same time. But there's lots of, I would say, there's lots of really good blog posts. If you go on the gov.uk user research blog or the design blog, there's lots of case studies on there. I've written quite a few of them myself uh, about kind of live experiments and A/B testing and things that we've done with the government. Probably got time for one more, otherwise, again, uh, okay. I'm from quite beer. We're not uh, time for a beer. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.